Number one requirement to have a best friend is you gotta enjoy being around them. Friendship ain't gonna go very far without if you don't like being around the person. You know what I'm saying? That's it's no mystery here. If, if it's a negative environment, I always said nobody wants to hang around a negative Nelly. I do it only by the commission of God because I have to because this is part of my calling. But that's the only reason I would ever hang around a negative Nelly. The fear of the Lord and I'm commissioned before him and I'm gonna stand before God and give an account for this situation. So I, that's part of the thing was like he endures to the end, that's part of my endurance. I do not enjoy being around a negative Nelly. I do not enjoy it, Sam I am. It just doesn't go good anywhere you put it. So you have to, it takes a level of, uh, they gotta be positive. You gotta, they, you gotta be happy when you're around them. Doesn't mean your friend will always say happy things to you, but you, it, it first gotta start there. It's investing time. It's consistency. It's time ver, uh, plus consistency. It is a, it, you know, you don't get a true best friend overnight because you filled out an application, they filled the application and we match, like we were, we're supposed to be best friends. That's not how it works, it's consistency. Because the longer you're around somebody, you get to know them. There's a lot, how many times you start hanging out with somebody and you realize, wait a second, you ain't quite who I thought you were in the beginning. All of a sudden you're like, you were the meanest I ever saw anybody be to that waiter. It's like. I don't know if I know you. It's like, you see them go level 10 on something, the be everybody has good behavior. Everybody wants to be good. You're gonna talk the game. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's like, do you have no idea what they're talking about? But you're like, yeah, I feel the same way. But over time bears it out. Time is the, the indicator. Is this guy really genuine? Is Does he really want these things? Uh, And it, it, it's the steady investment. You know, it's not the, the three month best friend and then they, they fade away because they got a new best friend. And when you get these, they stay with you for the rest of your life. Uh, the next one is intimacy, or you could say vulnerability. The one that you can open up to. If you don't have these three elements, you don't have a best friend. Some of that you can be, vulnerable to, to tell, open up to, well, I'm just not an opener up. It means you don't have very many, best, you don't have no best friends. You cannot have best friends without opening up and exposing yourself. It's, it's essential to a strong friendship. But the problem is you have some people that never open up because I don't want to be a burden on them. That's not the real reason. Then you have others that open up to everybody. That if you open up to everybody and say, well, I have a problem being real with anybody. I'll just be open up. Well, you're a fool. The Bible says a man that just opens up and expresses his feelings, he's a fool. You don't do that, it's not wise. It's gonna cause you a lot of pain and heartache. A lot of times it can be indicated back to why you spread, why you just explode in your feelings. You lack a relationship with God. And the other one, you're bored. When you vent your feelings, it causes a situation. It causes uh, an emotional response from somebody. It's important to, to obviously to be a friend. The greatest friendship comes from you and the Lord. So if you have a hard time expressing an uh, intimate communication with God, you're probably not gonna have too many besties. If you find it awkward and you're saying things to God that you would not say to anybody else on the planet, like, it's like, you don't talk to nobody else like that, but you go into the, the almost the church mindset response to God, 
Lord, I just want to thank you for my day, and I just, uh, man, I'm just real. It's like it's, it doesn't sound authentic to your to your language, to your speech. It means you're not being authentic with. If he's supposed to be, you have the opportunity to be a friend of God, and you're not being authentic. Much the more the one you know, the one who knows your thoughts and knows your intents and knows your heart. If you're not being authentic with him. How in the world can you possibly be authentic with other people? So it obviously stems from our relationship with the Lord. And friendships along the way have been crucial f- to making the journey this far. It's probably where I would say the church is probably bankrupt the most is in friendships. Even in a small group, it's, I mean, obviously in a small group, it's better to have, I mean, it should be easier to have besties than any other place than a sea of people. But you gotta make sure it doesn't come randomly. You gotta make effort. And this is something, no doubt, the Lord has corrected me on and making, you know, because I talked about that this year is the contend with the precious. And I've done, you know, just rearranging certain things in my personal life to making sure, do I even know what precious is? Well, in 10 years, what do I want to see grow? What do I want, what, what, what do I want to see? And you gotta make sure, or just say five, five years, what would you want to see happen in your personal walk with the Lord and in in the people that God's given around you? I wanna see them to go to another level, but it takes sacrifice. Uh, Jesus says, no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for his friend. There is a laying down of our life for one another that we do, not because it's convenient, because it's necessary in our pursuit of Jesus. It's necessary in our pursuit of God. Jesus was around people. He got alone for moments, but friendships, no doubt. This is, this is the Messiah. He brought several of his close of clothes in his hour of anguish. It wasn't just him and God. He said, hey, I wanna bring you all along to Gethsemane. I want you to stand in the gap. I wanna be able to hear your voice. I'm just gonna ease over here. You know, as he was in that garden and he pauses as he's just contemplating what, what was going down with the cross, hearing his brothers Standing in the gap for him, no doubt gave him strength in in those moments. So it was a big deal when they fell asleep. So if Jesus needs friends, we do too. I'm not talking about associates, I'm talking about real, real, real friends. All right, so we're gonna define friendship. I'm just gonna use one verse here just to do it. <clears throat> Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. And a brother born for adversity. That's a pretty good definition for me for friendship. Contend with the precious. If you focus on the precious, they might be your children and maybe one or two others. I'm talking about really quality friendships that take you to another place. Not just get along, not just have things in common, just don't like playing together. I'm talking that you can't help when you get around this person, they take you deeper in Jesus. You gotta make sure you got one or two of those that take you to a deeper place. That number one, they can maintain respect for you as the friendship grows. There's no deep, Friendship without respect and honor. Respect and honor for who they are and they respect and honor for who you are. I don't wanna become just somebody's bro. If we have, if, if my best friends are on the bro level, there's, no, there's nothing really to gather after that. They have a calling that I'm committed to. They have a purpose on this planet and, I want, and I'm committed to see them grow and achieve that. So we're all in need. The world, I mean, science says we're in need. God's word says we're in need. 
Jesus' life and example shows that we're in need. If we wanna be Christ's likeness, we wanna shine and walk as he walked, he wasn't starving for friendships or people being around him. But he knew how to separate and who the 5,000, he didn't share his deepest heart's groanings. The closer friendships that he had, he had 12 that he expressed a lot to. He had 12 that he hung out with a lot, that he fellowship a lot, that he taught a lot. But there's a smaller group that he expressed certain things to. They got to be on special field trips. Uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 4, 9 through 12. I don't know if I'm gonna read the whole thing, but it says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. There ain't no doubt about it. I love iron sharpening. And if we're, you know, I, I like having study buddies. You know what I'm saying? It just, you don't have to figure it all out. We don't have to do this together or, you know, do this by ourselves. Because there's, a, when, you, when you're iron sharpening, when you're praying together, when you're building, you have a, you have a bigger reward, you have a bigger return for your labor. Uh, for if uh, one fall, or for if uh, they fall, one will lift up his uh, companion. But woe to the man who falls alone. When you don't have nobody else to pick you up, it's a bad place to be. When you're having that really, real hard issues, but you don't really have nobody to go after to to help. This is the loneliness that's eating the world up and the church. It says, uh, let's see. It says, the one may be overpowered by another, but two can withstand him. Two can withstand him. Who's the him for us? That'd be the accuser, our adversary. You know, there's sometimes in certain mindsets and conditions that we're in, in certain places, we're, we will be overtaken in that fight. That's why it's so important to have onesie twosies when you're really emotionally off. When you're in the wrestling match or fight against depression, do I struggle? Do I struggle with depression? I fight that booger. Anybody in this room that says they don't is lying, because the thing is, if you don't fight it, you will be overtaken by it. So I do have my fights. I do have the accuser saying how terrible and how you did this wrong and you haven't done this and da 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 da. You have to resist that. So it's like mm, that's not really true. So for the next hour. We go into combat and I come out victorious. This is what it means to grow in the knowledge of God. Growing in is your inheritance identity. The same accusations you heard in your 20s, you'll hear in your 30s, you'll hear in your 40s. And now he just has a bigger uh, uh, reminder list of all your mess ups. You know, there's a lot of grace for yourself when you're 20 and just been safe for years. Like, dude, I don't know much, you know? There's a lot of, you have a lot of grace for yourself. But as you journey with the Lord, you can look back, it's like, wow, I thought there's a little bit more fruit. I thought I would have handled that a little differently. He has a list that he can come at you with, but you have to make sure you know who you, your identity and thank the Lord, I have brothers that will stand with me in these intimate moments and it's like, dude, I am really struggling with some depression right now. Because, you know, it's interesting when the enemy sows a lie and you're in the midst of the, when it's in, hitting your emotions, your vision is completely blurred. It's why you have to remind you, take thoughts captive and set your mind on things above because the enemy wants to keep you on this, this mirage that's going on, the smoke cloud. None of it's really backed by much and it's all part truth, but he's wove it to be a story and it's touching your feelings. Ooh, I'm under, what I call it, I'm under attack. I don't under fight, it's like, man, I'm, I'm, man, I'm depressed right now. I'm in the battle fighting depression. I never identify with this is who I am. It's important, but in, in, hey bro, I'm in a battle here. I need you to be praying. It's important that that prayer 
If you fight it internally, you're gonna, be, you're gonna lose most of the time. The longer you fight internally, the, the worse you get at it. Because what happens, you just don't care. It is what it is, same old, same old. Life sucks, this is how it's gonna be. I'm not gonna really achieve more than this. You get defeated and boxed in in your mind when you're silent. Enemy has the key. God's given us a key and it's called our mouth to speak. You gotta speak to a storm. <clears throat> All right. So if some of your friends only come over when they have problems for you to solve, stay away, they're not your friend. That's part of the problem. We're identifying a, a certain folks as our friends and it's like, you're having a draining and, and uh, draining and it doesn't, it doesn't give back. So what happens, most people want it, it's better to be left alone. I got my own problems to deal with. <laughs> I don't need no mothers. See, that, that's, the, that's the twisted version of friendship. And that's what happens when you try to have too many friendships. You gotta focus on and contend and, and build up. You know, new friendships as you're doing a new start, they can't, I encourage you to stay in the positive ones. So if you're gonna become this new best friend revelation, you're gonna, if you start dumping the garbage, getting off to a bad leg, it's like, dude, I want, we need to, we hear enough garbage throughout the, our, our, our life. There's enough accusations just hear, you hearing in your own head, let alone, I encourage you to stay encouraged. Build each other up in the word. Build, encourage each other in the place of where you're running the race with. Uh, if you don't laugh, or you, if you don't laugh around that person, you need to get away from them. There should be a joyous expression when we hang out. I don't really ever, ever laugh, hardly ever, laugh at movies. It just doesn't, Courtney, she is busting at the seams. Just, she's a laugher. But when I get around guys, no, that's a different thing. I, we can cut up and make each other laugh like crazy. It's more life face-to-face -face things that I laugh about. I love it. I don't laugh enough, but those kind of fellowships I love. It's important for our health. It's important for our relationship.